Let's try take two. Hello everyone, this is Devious Hostel bringing you my first guide. Um, it's a Neverwinter online guide for the Guardian Fighter going for a tank hybrid DPS spec. Um, currently with the current meta in the game, and this video is as of the 15th of May 2013, so hopefully this will be outdated here shortly. But with the uh, current meta in the game, um, there is no true threat generated by the tanks. We have no true full-on taunt that has a short enough cooldown. So what ends up happening is we have to figure out ways to maintain enough threat that we can maintain most of the aggro throughout a dungeon. Now uh, I've cleared up through and finished Castle Never at this point which is the highest level content. Uh, and I'm gonna go through my build, uh, the reasons I chose what runes I chose, my spec, my feats, and then even my companion. And hopefully I can give everybody a pretty good idea of what you need to do with your class, um, how you can look to build it, and what to look forward to in the future. Uh, currently, um, for gear, I am in the full Grand Regent uh, regalia. It's uh, the four-piece bonus, I believe, is possibly the best out of the three-piece, or I'm sorry, out of the three sets of tier 2 which gives us 20% of power based off of our defense well most guardian fighters once they're in tier 2 have about 45 90 to easily almost 5000 depending on how they ruined um, they're going to have that much armor that I gain almost a thousand power from it um, from there uh, in the helm and the utility slot all utility slots put movement speed. It's the dark rune, put a rank 5. You can go up to rank 7s to 9s if you'd like to, but um, with new content supposedly coming out in the next coming months, I don't know if it's worth wasting the money getting into a rank 9. Uh, movement speed is king. We are the only class currently within the game that takes as large of a hit of movement speed decrease on combat, uh, on entering combat. Um, you'll notice that if you're trying to drag a bunch of mobs, you will be the slowest moving one. I'm assuming that has to do with a lot of the Neverwinter lore, and once we're in combat, our shield makes us heavier sort of thing, so we run the slowest. So movement speed is key. So I, I recommend getting a rank 6, possibly a rank 7 if you have the high enough gear. Um, and then on our chest piece, uh, I would suggest maximum hit points in all your defense slots. Maximum hit points is actually pretty boss currently with the full tier set and all but one tier 2 ring um, and technically I think I have a tier 2, it's a tier 2.5 the ones for Castle Never, I'm only missing one ring everything else is pure tier 2 and the the defense and deflect stats that I have are just outstanding um, you can't get too much harder or higher because of the diminishing returns and those diminishing returns I mean you're literally getting tenths of a percent for uh, every hundred or so that you start putting in for defense stats so I'm sitting at 32, 22, 26 so I mean I have a stupid amount of hit points at that point that's pretty much the only thing you can stack your defensive stats aren't going to continue to push you up higher and higher in your uh, damage resistance. So you might as well stack HP. When in doubt, stack HP. It's best possible solution and they're the cheapest. On most markets, Radiant is the cheapest freaking enchant you can get. Um, that being said, all right, for your armor enhancement slot, my recommendation is negation. Um, my other recommendation would be soul forged. However, there's a problem with soul forged right now, and I don't know if it's working as intended. But thank you for playing in open beta. Um, soul forged. If you are hit for an amount that does not take you directly into the 25% mark, so say you're like one hit to your 15% uh, point you're going to not activate the proc. 
Um, I did some very extensive testing with it in some of the dungeons, and it wasn't activated for a full minute, timed it and everything, would get hit, and then for some reason I would not get the benefit even though I was hit for up more than 25% of my life. So that being said, you should probably look at going with the negation because most boss fights, at least the harder bosses, run longer than 10 minutes. So that means once every 10 minutes, you're going to get a good freaking uh, 10%, I think it's 10%, yeah, 10% damage resistance buff. That's huge. That's equivalent to about a thousand plus defense. So, alright, obviously arms, utility, um, that's another movement speed. Alright, and then I have Longsword of the Steel Bulwark currently, uh, working on the Dracolich uh, drop from Castle Never. Once I get that, I will be swapping out, obviously. Um, and then the Longsword of the Steel Bulwark, I have a Silvery Enchantment, which is the plus recovery, and I rock all recovery in my offense slots. Uh, recovery is huge. Uh, some of our abilities get down to a six second cooldown and lower. I mean, I can lunge pretty much by the time I get done running through my rotation of uh, encounter abilities. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. Um, from there, in my weapon enchantment, I have a regular plague fire, the one that you make after you use four lessers. The plague fire enchantment is the best tanking enchantment you can get. Debuffs currently in this game generate a high amount of threat. It's why clerics pull a lot of threat whether they're healing or debuffing. Either way they're gonna pull a lot of threat. Debuffs pull a large amount of threat. It's a significant portion of your weapon damage. And it adds up. I know on Corundax um, and some of the other dungeons I've watched my burn effect from that stack up to well over a hundred thousand in damage because I'm able to stay on target for so long. The other big thing about it is a luster is five percent defense reduction three times stack so 15. My regular is 10 so that's 30 percent and then the greater is 15 percent so that would be 45 percent total damage reduction. That plus the use of Tide of Iron can be massive amounts of just weakening the boss or whatever target you're trying to take down initially. It also works in PvP. Alright, from there, um, I have the Archon Shield, because the Archon Shield, even though it's level 58, is currently broken, probably a typo, but there's 18 AC on it. Um, 18 AC is more than most of the wizards in this game have. Actually, I think it's I think the only class that might have more than 18 AC is the Cleric, and I think they're sitting at around 22. So, that's like adding a whole nother person on you. It's at this tier of gear, it is about 5% of your damage resistance. You get this shield. It is the best shield in the game currently. It might be level 58 and easy to farm out of a normal Corundax. It is still the best shield in the game. A lot of people are retarded and have it freaking up on the uh, auction house for like 58, 80. Buy that shit. Hold on to that shit. Sell it once they go back up because it is the best shield in the game, bar none, hands down. All right, on the boots utility slot, obviously it's Grand Region. As you can see, all of my stuff was of the Grand Region best set for a tank. The only other one that would be viable, I think, to get would be the High General's uh, set. Other than those two, Timeless is kind of a waste. I wouldn't I wouldn't go into it. Alright, that being said, on to the necklace slots. Um, I'm currently rocking a uh, Ancient Brawler's Necklace of the Guts, Power, Defense, Deflection. Three main stats. Pretty, you know, hard not to go with that. Since it's a offense slot, I put in recovery. All right, and then I went with Grand Fugitive's Ring of Revolt. I will be replacing this with an ancient Ring of Revolt because um, I wanted 
kind of got into a good groove and want to maintain what this is. It'll be um, just plus a couple of stats, but it gives me max HP. It gives me the offense slot for recovery. I get a little bit of deflection out of it, which is not a horrible, horrible stat, but it could be better. That being said, um, I have a Ring of the Burning Light, HP, defense, deflection, and a defense slot. So that, I mean, that ring has, I think, more defense than my boots. So, I mean, it's a pretty good um, stat combo. And then on to my belt, um, max HP with maximum HP in my defense slot plus defense and deflection. Uh, I also have the gem exquisite shirt as well as exquisite pants. And same thing goes, max HP and recovery in the offense. So as you're coming into your tier 2 gear, you're going to be shifting your stats around quite a bit. You'll go one day where, oh my goodness, I'm at 5,000 power. The next day you're going to be at, freaking why am I at 2,000? Just be conscious, you're going to have to spend a lot to maintain some of that min and maxim, maxing. Once you maintain that, you can literally start finding the exact upgrade for what you're looking for and replacing it with that exact upgrade. Alright, on to my powers. Alright, so this is where the game becomes a little bit fun. Alright, as you're leveling, you're going to have to take some different ones, but go ahead and I believe everybody gets a free respec once they hit 60. If not, spend the $6, get yourself right, because a lot of these abilities are not negotiable to be able to play as a tank in this game. Alright, you have Cleave maxed out. Cleave is your hardest hitting. You will do the most damage with Cleave before anything else. You can literally, in, in some ad fights, just turn in circles and just hit Cleave all day long, maintain all of the aggro, and do shit tons of damage. Alright, Tide of Iron. All the way up. It reduces damage resistance. This is the best ability you have. Spam this shit on huge mobs. It stacks with your fucking... Plague Fire Enchantment. Alright, then we go with Lunging Strike. Hard hitting, short, short cooldown. This thing will crit for upwards of 20k if you hit. Alright, you have Villain's Menace. Villain's Menace is your best daily ability. It makes you immune to CC for the most part. There's a few things in the game that will still get you. However, you, are, you have a reduction in knock, knockback and it increases your damage. This is huge. A, it doesn't have a maximum target counter. So if you're playing with a control wizard and he's bringing in an arcane singularity, wait for them all to get up in that arcane singularity and then hit your daily. You will crit for freaking 6 to 10k most of the time on every single one of those mobs. Just outstanding amounts of damage. That's huge amounts of threat. Alright, then you have shield talent. Shield talent, max this out. Increases your guard up to 15%. Alright. It comes into play. I know a lot of people don't like our shield mechanic. And I'm kind of in somewhat of an agreement. But get the increased block. It does help eventually. Alright. Enforce threat. Enforce threat. It's our only quote unquote taunt. It has a 5 target maximum. And it doesn't always work. It's kind of a joke. However... It still places marks on them, which means when you have a mark on a target, you generate increased threat. So, because it still places a mark, it still allows you to pull some of that aggro, and you're able to use some of your AoE abilities, or even some of your single target, in order to generate enough threat in order to pull them off, because that mark will assist you out. Alright, Griffin's Wrath, max that out. That's mostly for PvP, has some PvE uses. Alright, grab Terrifying Impact. Has some PvP uses and some PvE uses. It's very situational, but it's not a bad spot. Alright, and then you're going to go into Knee Breaker. Max that out. Knee Breaker is good in PvP. And good for single target boss fights where literally all you have to do is put as much DPS on that boss as you can. Karandax is a great example. Um, Temple of the Mad Dragon is another. Those are bosses that doesn't really necessarily require you to face them in any direction because they really aren't going to move and because of the abilities that you do do and your feats 
you're going to be having a threat most likely anyway. So, Knee Breaker, the damage that it does, especially if it crits, if it crits, it can it can tick upwards of 40k, especially if you use it when you have Villain's Menace up. It's not saying wait until your daily is up, use it on cooldown, but when the, your daily is up, I generally will wait for all of my cooldowns to quit, drop my daily, and then go through the full rotation. Knee Breaker is huge if you can get it to crit. Um, Enhanced Mark maxes out. It's a great um, little trash mob thing. Um, and it's actually kind of good for some boss fights when you're having to jump around and uh, maintain threat on moving targets that lose threat. Phase Spiders lose threat every time they phase. Um, the Pirate King... I'm sorry, not the Pirate King. It's the... No, I'm sorry, yes. Pirate King. Pirate King, every time it spawns a new group of adds, they generally run through the boss. If you just drop a uh, Threatening Rush, which I'll get to here in a second, it'll actually pull some of those mobs off and give your cleric some more time to kite. Alright, grab one point in the Knight's Challenge. Great threat. If you want to want one target um, to do double damage to you and double dam and you want to do double damage back, great. Works great to kill clerics in PvP. You can two-shot them. It's fucking outstanding. Next combat superiority, max this out. This is your best class feature. Anvil of Doom, Frontline Surge. Those two are pretty self-explanatory. Frontline Surge is great for keeping aggro. It knocks everything prone. Great interrupt. Go on to Threatening Rush. Max into the fray. Max into the fray. Trample of Fallen. Everybody says it's broken. It's not. It's outstanding. Quite possibly one of your best trash abilities in you do more damage to things that are controlled. If you're not running with a control wizard, you're fail. Anytime it's a daze, so um, rogue smoke screen. Anytime it's getting sucked into a arcane singularity, steal time, um, oppression of force, any of those abilities, just to name a few. Um, oh, even your frontline surge. When you use frontline surge to knock down the target, guess what? Those are now under a control effect. That's 15% more damage. That's 15% more damage. And when we get into our feats, you'll see that it's also more damage than that. And it's considered or converted directly into threat. All right. Next daily is Supremacy of Steel. This one is great. It's it's Thornmail. If anybody's a League of Legends fan, Thornmail OP. All right. From there, we got Knights of Valor. Knight's Valor is great at defending your party. It's great when you team team it up with Supremacy of Steel. Drop your Knight's Valor, drop your Supremacy of Steel, give it a good five second count, and then hit your Supremacy of Steel again. Send this fan back out, returning a large portion in, in percentage of damage received. This is Knight's Valor is great for saving your party. Even if you're not necessarily going to be pulling all the threat off of them, you're reducing their damage by 50%. It's out. You couldn't ask for a better ability to do that. It's on a short cooldown, and it lasts for almost 10 seconds. Um, Alright, Bull Charge. This is mostly for PvP. Has very limited use in PvE, except for the final boss in Castle Never, which if you watch my video on that, you'll see how I use it almost exclusively the entire fight. And then you have Indomitable Strength. If anybody, whoever watches this video, buys or spends the talent points on Enduring Warrior, you should probably either hang yourself or borrow your dad's shotgun and kill yourself. This is the worst class feature. I hope someone from Neverwinter is watching this. Cryptic, why you put this as a Paragon Power A and at the end of our talent tree B, who made this ability? Replace this with something useful like threat generation. You stupid, stupid game designer. Alright, on to feats. Alright, this is really simple, stupid. Alright, toughness, strength of focus, get those two. You want more strength, because it increases the amount of your block, and it increases your damage. You have to be retarded not to take that. Maximum hit points, duh. Alright, armor specialization, increases the effectiveness of AC and defense. If you're a human, this is huge, because it's 3 more percent, so it's actually 18% on your defense once you get this. Alright, and mind you, I do play humans, so that does give me three extra points. You guys are kind of sucking. Alright, if you are not human, 
you will not be taking grit. Alright. Shield Resurgence. Alright. Whenever you're kicked back, knocked down, put into a friggin' spell, whatever, you get Shield Resurgence. You gain 4% of your hit points over 10 seconds. It's kind of just an easy, quick heal. It can't happen more than every 30 seconds, but you'll find that if you're losing your block or even using it to lose it like that, you're going to have about 30 seconds of recharge time, and then your block's going to be back up. It's not a huge heal, um, but it's enough to keep you going. That's the biggest thing with it. All right, obviously you're going to grab Potent Challenge. That's 15% more threat generation. And then you're going to grab Powerful Attack. All right. 10% more damage for your at-wills and encounters. That's a lot. Alright, if you're human, take Grit. Alright, you gain 3% of your maximum hit points in temporary hit points when you're healed by a player power. Alright, so anytime your cleric heals you or a control wizard with uh, one of their abilities, it has the ability to put on a heal every time it does get, receives damage, that kind of thing. It's going to give you temporary hit points. Alright, that goes into our Paragon tree, where when we get temporary hit points, we do 15% more damage. So, temporary hit points are huge for us. We have a lot of abilities that can do it, that can make or break your damage throughout a dungeon. Alright, so, take measure. When you are crit, you gain temporary hit points. goes back to what I was just saying about temporary hit points. 15% more damage. Because I have this... And because I have Grit, I gain temporary hit points. By the way, Shield of Resurgence can also proc Grit. So, pretty much every minute, I'm going to have temporary hit points. That's not including abilities that clerics have that give you temporary hit points. So you're going to have 15% more damage fairly frequently. Alright, from there we're going to go into Cruel Cut style. 15% more damage for Cleave on a Tactical Superiority. You got 15%, or I'm sorry, 5% more damage on your tactical superiority class feature. And once you have 5 points in it, it doesn't require you to actually be hit by the target first. Which basically means it's 20% flat increased damage. Alright, from there you're going to grab Reckless Attacker, the final ability. Reckless Attacker gives us power, um, yeah, it gives us power proportional to our block meter. Alright, so say our block meter is at 100%. That's a 100% extra power. So my 4,000 power right now is actually probably about 2,008. If you actually go through and count all the stats on my character. But because I have full block and maintain full block, I have 4,000 power. It allows you to stat differently. It's very good for um, maneuvering your points and putting in certain stats throughout your build. Okay, all right, then you have a fight on down in the tactician tree. All right, 10% cooldown reduction on all of your encounters. It makes up the need to absolutely 100% stack um, recovery. Now, recovery is still a great stat, and I still encourage you to get it, which I'm currently in the process of stacking. I think I'm at about 1,500 right now. Uh, but that 10% cooldown is base and doesn't count in part of the diminishing returns and recovery. Alright, and then you're going to use your last 5 points in Battle Trample. Alright, this goes back to Trample of the Fallen. Alright, 25%, I'm sorry, you will deal 25% more damage and gain 25% more physical damage and threat. Huge, huge. It's why whenever I, it's why I love Arcane Singularity. It's quite possibly the best building or best ability in the game. And of course, while I'm doing a guide, my allergies kick up and I start to sneeze. Um. All right. So Arcane Singularity goes out immediately. Drop your taunt. Drop, drop Enforce Threat. Once you drop Enforce Threat, drop Villain's Menace. Then drop Frontline Surge. The amount of damage you're going to do in that period of time is easily in the hundreds of thousands. Um, actually, I've recently surprised some of the uh, most geared out control wizards on the Dragon Shard 
um, that I group with, that we clear um, Castle Never with, is I can actually keep up and damage with them now because of this ability. I keep more targets off them now. So, that being said, look at your build. This protector tree right here that I'm mousing over, half of it does not work. Over half of it is absolute garbage. The 5 to AC doesn't always add into your stats. And even if it adds into your stats on top hand uh, portion of your character screen, it doesn't add into your freaking um, actual gear score rating. Or your actual damage resistance rating. So, that being said, don't go into this tree. You're going to lose that on damage, which is what you really truthfully need to bring to the table. Because if you're in this tree, you do pathetic amounts of damage. And, this tree says shield slam. Really? Really? It says your shield slam and, and stab at wills deal 15% more damage. I'm sorry. I don't have a shield slam. I wish I did. I know I have in um, Tide of Iron, but I don't have a shield slam. So, you know what? I hope someone from Neverwinter watches this. This tree is fucking broken. This is useless. If anybody specs into this tree, they literally make their class more useless than you already made us. Okay, on to our companions. Alright, we have the wife. Alright, that is my level 25 acolyte. The acolyte is the best companion for a guardian fighter, hands down. Alright? I'm still working on upgrading her runes and some of her items, however. Alright, offense slot recovery. Another offense slot power. Just put some power, put some recovery, it increases the, her abilities a little bit, and the recovery helps her out. Obviously, in your defense slot, you're going to put the 7% um, pet stats. Alright. Um, currently, cheapest one that I was able to find, Greater Icon of Retribution. Um, I did that for the Lifesteal. And you'll see why here in a second. Surgeon Ban, Lifesteal. And we have Ancient Berserker's Ring of Cleaving, Lifesteal. Okay. So my pet has 479 life steal. I gain 7% of that. On top of that, she has what's called Kelimvor's Sword. Blesses target ally with life steal based on companions level and total life steal. Alright. I don't know what this buff actually truthfully is, but currently it's running at about 2500 addition to what I currently have. That's at about, I think it's 14.6% with what I currently have base on my character. So, that's quite a bit of lifesteal. It ticks in, you know, 50, 60 a time, but you also gotta remember that my Plague Fire is also ticking it off. Um, I heal myself hugely with Villain's Menace. Um, and then we have. Blessing of Kelimvor. Shields target ally, reducing damage taken by 10%. That's 10% damage resistance. Flat. You don't have to do anything for it. It just gets cast on you when you're in combat. It also will get cast on your allies. This, this is great to have on any encounter. Any encounter. Have your acolyte out. The shield buff is outstanding. It's on a 4 second cooldown. I'm not really quite sure how, it, how long it lasts. But it's great. I would severely love spending the AD or spending the Zen and get the Acolyte of Kalimbor. Anyway, guys, this is my build for the Guardian Fighter. Um, I will be replacing this one if at any point in time they make my class even.